Lord, I thank you this morning, Lord, for this real privilege, Lord, to stand before your children, to say a few things about you, Lord, to testify about your goodness upon my life, Father. Lord, where would I have been without you? Oh, Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your grace, your mercy to be in the land of the living today and to be in my right mind and senses to know that without you I can do nothing. Father, I commit this program, this short time I'm going to stand here, Lord. One thing I ask of thee, Father, when this meeting is all over, may somebody speak like one of those disciples on their way to Emmaus. One of them, Father, two of them after you are dead, thought that this was a tell, Abdul story. We followed this man in vain and we wasted our life. But Lord, they wanted to make up for the lost day and started going back, Lord. But they were discussing about you. The good thing about you is that whenever you are discussed upon, you will appear in the midst of the people. Today, we are trying to look and seek the origin of man. What is a man is why we are here for. Lord, we are discussing about you. And I pray that you appear again in our midst. When they were discussing about you, you joined in the conversation. And they were having a pity spirit, pitying themselves. Oh, this man we thought his coming will transform our life. Look at him, the wicked soldiers of the Jews has crucified. They beat him mercilessly and there was nothing about him. We wasted all our life. And he joined and said, what is this that you are discussing about and you are so lawful? They say, are you the only new man in town? Don't you know what happened? They rebuke you. But you are the word. You couldn't do anything but you pointed them back to the word. You told them what did the scripture say concerning him. You took them back to the word. Their heart warmed up. Just my, like my heart has already warmed up by the testimony of Brother Leke this morning. Lord, when it was the evening time, like the age and time we are living in about it, you never force yourself on any man because you are gentle Holy Spirit. You behave like you are going away. But the people notice there's something different when this man joined in the conversation and they pleaded that you stay with them. Lord, when you came in by their own volition and desire, they brought a bread of life for you to break. And by the breaking of the bread, when you took that bread of life and broke it, Lord, their eyes pop open. They knew it was you. In the same vein, you vanish away in their sight. And when that service was all over, they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us as we go on the way? When this meeting is all over, let somebody talk to each other and say, did not our heart burn within us when it's with us? Because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you did in the Bible days, you are capable of doing today. Do it and give us a witness to glorify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Be seated, please. Amen. Okay. We're here this morning to discuss about a total man. Um, and I would like us to take it in three angles, just exactly what the meeting is all about. A total man, a man as a businessman, as a family man, how we are made up and what we are here to do. I would like you to give me your undivided attention, and I'll try to share a little testimony, maybe to get your attention and I'll do that by asking a question. Is there anybody in this room that did not go beyond elementary three in school and lost his father at the age of four? If there's one person, stand up. Is there anybody? Okay, fine. I am the one. So don't be surprised. You're going to get some grammatical error as I speak. But the problem with many of you that are sitting here is the school you went to that really created your problem. <laughs> People like me didn't have the opportunity you have to go to school, but everywhere I have been in life is a school. 
It's about whether you are willing to learn or you are not willing to learn. It's about your mindset, the way you think, and the things that motivate you. So this is one of the schools. People like Leke are people I listen to. I've listened to him one time so many years ago when he was in uh, Day Stars and uh, took that subject on economy. And I, people, it's people like this I steal their ideas. Many of you read books every day. You take book and read it and read it and read it and then looking for the next convention, the next miracle, the next book you are going to read, but you don't have wisdom because you never put into practice the things you are learning. Knowledge is important, but will never take you anywhere. You need a wisdom. Wisdom is application to put into action the things that you have learned. So, people like me never had the opportunity you have. But as a young man that didn't have any formal education, have no reason, no pedigree to be successful in life, God, for some reason, called me into this body of Christ to be able to let you know that Bible is not a history book, that it is still as flesh as it is when it is written to you today. So give me your undivided attention as I take you in a little journey. I'm, and I'm going to do it by taking this book that many of you, this is the first book I learned how to read. And I'm telling you honestly truth that the best, the worst subject I had was English. It troubled me when I was three, four years ago. For, for when I was three years, five years, it's still troubling me to today. But the reason why I never really bother is that God wants to use people like me to wake you up from your slumber. My mother never spoke English to me, so she spoke vernacular to me. Losing my father at the age of four. I used to go, when I go to school then, you know, if you put, if, before the, 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 the master finished setting uh, arithmetic, we call it then, I, I dropped my book. My brain is sharp to catch it. But the day of dictation is the day I go to school late. <laughs> because I don't want anybody to catch me. So, but you major on the things you do not have. But people like me major on the things that goes right in my life. So I forget about the things that do not go right in my life because no one single person has it all. In each of every one of us, there's a little of every one of us. That's why the Bible says every joint supply. Just understand that you are not a biological accident. There's reason why God brought you here on the earth. And if there's another person that would have taken your place, you could not have come. Because there are one million germs that fought in your father's when he discharged it to your mother. And you are the one that won, that caught life. So you are one in a million. You have been winning all your life, but you need to win even here physically. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I learned the principle of this book. That's why I sang that song. It's my everything. Listen, for some of you who do not know, when you go to a store to buy a product, I don't care whatever the product is, when you buy that product, the first thing they do is that they package the product very well, put the product down on the box of the package, then put the, the, the gadgets to operate it, the final thing you see when you open that book, bad product is a little book, and that book is the manual. The manual is what explains to you what you, are, what you got, what you are going to do out of it, how to operate it. Some of us, Nigeria, that's where we all greet it, is that as soon as we take the product, we throw the packet away, Including the, there is a little slip outside of the outside of the, the manual that is called warranty paper, and then you need to fill that warranty paper and send it back to the manufacturer. That warranty paper is how the manufacturer know you are using the product, and that product connects you back to the manufacturer. 
The manufacturer put you in his system. When he see you fill that form, he knew his product at you. By reading the manual, you know what demand you are going to be making on the product. But some of us throw the packet away. Sometimes he say, this is 110 volts. You plug it in 240 volt. Boom. The next thing you say, this thing doesn't work. Because you did not follow instruction of the manual. Who is the manufacturer of human being? What is God's manual? This is the manual for life. This is the school I went. This is the Facebook I learned how to read. And that's why I can stand here without this Bible. I can take three chapters or four chapters in this book and read it word to word. Because I was a young man when I came in contact with the person of Jesus Christ at the age of 14 plus. And my mind was open. I used to sleep in a small shop, you know, in Bobo Stop there, 88 Griffith Street, where they are dump orange in the front of our shop, without air condition, without fan. But Aleke has talked to you about the power of visualization and imagination. At the age of 15, not 15 actually, because I got settled by 15. I was under 15. 14, 13 years plus, 14 years plus. Because people like me are those kids you say they were abused. I, I sat, the death of my father brought unprecedented discipline upon my life that by the age of seven, I was already hawking on the street, supporting my mother. Those kind of kids you say they were abused. I used to be one of them. Okay? Um, I became a breadwinner. Don't complain about the things that goes wrong in your life. Adversity is nothing but a refining fire that burns out impurities in your life. Because Job said, when I am dry, I shall comfort like God, purify it. But the power of imagination is all that matter than every other thing. That's why, you know, I was here screaming, raising my hand, and some of you will be wondering what is wrong with this guy. The real truth is that I was 14 years when I passed AG Leventis building, going to Idomoto Park to enter bus, to enter bus to go to Newe with Awalawala. Awalawala is a bus where a, 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 a tipper kind of transportation system, where you sat on a bench, your leg is not on the ground, you are suspended at the top. <laughs> and when the motor enter gallop, the thing throw you up. And you land on the floor. If it's running, they put tarpaulin on top of you. And somebody can mess there. And then you are on your own. Because there's nowhere the thing goes up there. Those are the kind of life we live. But I was passing at that age in the 20s. I pointed at that building. I said, one day I'm going to make a building like this. The man that was escorting me cock, cock my head. Because he could not imagine... A boy that is sleeping in a shop at that age is seeing H. Leventis building. <laughs> Hallelujah. The first building I made in Lagos is in Adiolo Deku. Number six, Adiolo Deku. Adiolo Deku and Akiat Adenshola. Go and look at that building and compare it with H. Leventis building. A vision is something that is you are bound to speak. It may tarry. But if you hold consistently on your faith, you will live to see the glory of God upon your life. Amen. So let me not take much of your time. We are going to open our Bible. I don't have a very limited time, but I just wanted to say this to get your attention for those of you who are already falling asleep this morning. If there's anybody that is tired or should be tired here now, it's myself. Because I arrived home by 7 o'clock this morning from night vigil. And I am here by, I, 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 I was here at, at least by about 9.30, correct? Yes. yes, okay. So, but um, the grace of God is sufficient. Let us look at Genesis 1. Because these are the principles I followed in my life that made me who I am and that have transformed me. Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man Give me your undivided attention. In our image, after our likeness, let them 
them who, them who man. Let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creepy things that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. God created man in his own image. You need to know this man God created that is an image of man. You need to understand who God is to know the man he created. God was a spirit. So God created a spirit being that is like himself. Hallelujah. When he said let them, some of you think that there were three persons in one God. When he said let them, that was how he said let, let me create a man, this species that God created and called man according to this Bible. We are made up of male and female. Follow me. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hallelujah. This spirit that is made in the image of God had the feminine and the masculine spirit within him. Hallelujah. Amen. And God said, uh, um, created he them, 28, and God blessed them. The first thing God did to his children is that he pronounced blessing upon them. And God said, let them be, and God said unto them, be fruitful. This is a command on a potential. I put something in you, bring it out. Be is an active verb. There's something that is loaded in that hard disk, but I want it to come out. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Take control and take dominion. Subdue it and have dominion over the fishes of the sea and over the fowls of the earth and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hallelujah! That's why all these people, Christians that run up and down looking for church where they are going for delivery service, I cannot understand them. Because many times I ask them, which delivery service did Abraham go? Many times the people tell you, it is the witchcraft your father watched that watches with you. Abraham's father and their family are idol worshippers. Once you come into the body of Christ, that old covenant is cut off from you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Before I became a Christian, nobody was a graduate in my family. But God sent me in that family to change their history. Hallelujah. A new covenant came into that. So, any spirit on the face of this earth without a body is illegal. He has no authority to be here. Man is the greatest being God made. Because we are talking about a total man today. Hallelujah. I want you to follow me. Give me your undivided attention. When God created a man, God created a spirit being. And God said, have dominion. Take over this earth. Rule it for me. Be in total authority. That's why there is a fear of a man in every being. It doesn't matter what animal it is, including lion. All you need to do is to understand the principle on which God's word operates. If you understand the principle, people like me didn't go to school like you. And that's why I'm telling you that the school you went to is your greatest problem. Because they brainwashed you until you started doubting yourself. You couldn't believe yourself anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you know who you are, that you are a spirit being in the first year, after God gave that spirit being a command, but this spirit can
cannot do a physical thing and not a, a physical thing that God demanded about it. God moved into a second stage. Genesis 2 7, we can open it. Genesis 2 7. <clears throat> and God and the Lord formed man out of the dust of the, the ground and breathed into his nozzle the breath of life. A man became a living soul. This is a man now that can carry out the physical instruction that God gave him. But God still kept this man after he gave him instruction and wait for this man to understand the instruction and make him to sleep to bring the woman out of that man. Hallelujah. To show you the nature of God that God had in mind when he said, let us make man in our own image. When you understand this, you understand the mystery of Godhead. Hallelujah. When God started deprecating the same thing he was through the life of a man. So, what is the motivation of God for creating a man? What was the motivation? According to Moses, in the book of Genesis 2.5, um, let's even take it from verse 4. These are the generation of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was on the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. The motivation of God to create a man is somebody who is going to be a manager. Somebody who is going to manage resources and deploy it. That was why the whole thing God created was full of rock but there was no seed no tree, no beauty, because God was lacking a personality, an individual to make that thing beautiful. So the first encounter God had with man was Genesis 2.15. Let us look at it. Genesis 2.15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? To dress it and to keep it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brothers, you can be, you are born in a male, but it is your choice to become a man. You have to decide whether you are going to be a man or not. And how do you become a man? By creativity. You express the glory of God. God created man to produce. Not produce by just giving birth to child. Because that kind of production that many of us in Africa are interested about it, you don't need any PhD to do that. Any idiot can do that. Hallelujah. But the productivity God is talking about and God shows you in Genesis have you wondered why God did not put even underwear on Adam? Because he wanted him to take part. Because he made him in his image. He wanted him to take part in the creativity. He hid it on the wool. Did you imagine why God never gave Adam a table, a, a shear? To sat upon because God hid it on a tree. Adam need to discover it and be able to take part in his creativity ability to be able to make something happen. Hallelujah! God never put a sandal or shoe on Adam because he hid it in a cow. Adam need to find it out and be able to put a part on it to be able to put it on. So, the book of Genesis 
was the origin. If you understand the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation, you understand the entire Bible. Two passage, two books of the Bible, the devil fought every time is Genesis and Revelation because he tells you his beginning and Revelation tells you about his ending. So he attacked these two books every time to be able to create a confusion. But if you follow this and understand the principle on which the word of God works, that's what makes me, I look like extraordinary because I know God can never violate his principle. When God speaks, God is sovereign until he spoke. God's sovereignty ends when something goes out of his mouth. Psalm 132, I think verse 2, uh, that, that 8 or 2, about, he said, I place my word above my, I place my, my word above my name. God is sovereign until he speaks. Whatever God says became a law to God himself. He will never violate his word. Hallelujah. Amen. If you understand this principle, then you can understand, you can take God by his word. And the, on the basis of the word of God, you will see something happen in your life. I learned these principles and I operate by them. When you leave this meeting, if you don't understand anything about anything I'm going to say, just understand this, the next three statements. That you require three things to survive in life. You can write it down. Amen. Number one is a vision. But Adele, Reke, you know, touched it. A vision. You must see it before it happens. And God, none of us are ungifted. God born every one of us with a gift. Let me tell you, not even, even a retarded person, no human being that came here that is not gifted. You, became, you will become a total man when you discover your gift. What you are here to do. You will create value and be a man of value when you discover your gift. Don't stop until you discover it. This morning we are doing something that has always been done. Because Hebrew chapter 3 verse 12 says, but exalt one another daily while it is day. Lest any of you being hardened. That's what we are doing. We are exalting you this afternoon. But an average human being limits himself and tell you what is not capable of doing. That's how men is because they want to stay in their comfort zone to be able not to demonstrate their capacity, the inherent capacity that God put in them, they limit it. Henry Ford, the man that built Ford Automobile, said, no human being is incapable of doing more than he or she think he can. God put an enormous potential in a man and a woman. But they need to believe God in his that creative ability to be able to bring those things out in their life. But when you doubt God, so you need vision. The second thing, write it down, is faith. Faith to believe your vision. Because if you tell me you have a vision, that's what many Christians do. They tell you they have a vision. You ask them, what is the vision? They start thinking about it. <laughs> if you have a vision, you must write it down. That's what the Bible said in Habakkuk. A vision is written down. You take note of whatever the vision is. Church, listen to me. I was 14 years plus when God revealed to me who I'm going to be in life. I wrote it down. Not those that I wrote it down. I hung it on top of my bed, in, my, in, the, in, in, the, in the upper side of my bed. I started dumb, getting, every night I would look at it and recite them all over. And what was those visions? I said, 
I am going to marry before I turn 20. I was 14 years plus, and I wrote it down. I said, I am going to buy my first car before I turn 23. I wrote it down. I said, I'm going to be a millionaire before I turn 25. I wrote it down. And I watered this vision with my mind. Because as you, you put your mind on the things you are going to do, that thing dominates you. And let me tell you, you can note it down also. Whosoever you are going to be, whatever you are created to be, you are at your best chance to become that thing from the age of 11, 12, 16, and 25. Those of you who are 27 and 28, you are already in a borderline. Do they make it at 30, 40, 50, 70? Yes, but very rare. As the year goes, it, it limits the opportunity and the window limits. If you never somersault before 15, don't try it at 25. <laughs> you know what you are going to get? A spinal call injury. The time to make your mistakes, all mistakes you have to make, is between 12 and 26. Statistic prove this and I'm telling you. 86% of successful people in their life made it between the age of 12 and 26. So you make yourself when you are young. That's why I'm sympathizing with the, generation, the children of this generation. Because this thing called internet has taken over your mind. Keep you busy. You are running from one program to the other and you get nothing. At my age, at your age, those things does, does not come in equation. And that's how I train myself till today. Sorry to say, something that will sound very strange to all of you. Because you look at people who are successful in life, it's easy for you to say, oh, it's an occult power. Yes, there are certain things we do that look like we are coming from occult power. And one of them is that I don't have television in my house till today. <laughs> I don't watch television. Whether you call it CNN or whatever thing it is. Because I go to office. I am, I am like a harborist that are trying to catch a spirit. <laughs> the intensity of my focus in life, I tell people, anybody who will destroy me is a man who succeeded to get me distracted. Before then, I do not see anybody as my competitor. If you can get me distracted, you've done your great job on me. That's why I try to remain focused. When I come back from office by 11 or 12, I want to have a little fellowship with my wife. I don't want a, a stranger to be talking. Take this. Somebody from nowhere, take all the time, and we are listening to him. When we finish, we go to bed, and the next thing, we box ourselves. We start fighting because we don't have fellowship. I've been married for 41 years. I never pointed my finger at my wife's mouth. I've never had a cause to raise my hand against her. Because I find time in the little group I have to have fellowship with her. And because I caught television out of our home. Hallelujah! <laughs> a harborist man, whatever you think it is, let it be to you. But what I am asking myself is, how does this thing contribute to my life? How did he make up in the vision that I have for myself? Anything that does not corroborate that vision, that's why vision is important. Listen to me very carefully. When you have a vision, you are close to a madman. And if the people do not say you are crazy, that vision do not come from God. Hallelujah. How do we know Isaiah got up one day and said, Thus says the Lord, a virgin will conceive. The people say, don't I tell you? <laughs> Is this still normal? He didn't say a woman will conceive. He said a virgin. How does a virgin conceive? You have to break her virginity first. Before her. So, they have always believed Isaiah, but that language, a virgin will conceive, 
They put doubt on him and said, forget it. The man has ate some hot pepper this night. But did the virgin conceive? 720 years after. It may not happen exactly that day. To the fact, to my dream, I was to turn 20 on December 24, 1978. I wedded my wife on September 23rd, 1978. Under 20 years. My senior brother has not married. It's not a classroom walk. <laughs> we are not in the game of whatever he do before because we didn't come to this world the same day. So I am on my own program what I have believed God for my life. I was 22 years old when I saw a Passat car with 3,200 kilometers from Mandela's. I bought it. It has a front bomber. I fix it up and I own a car before I turn 23. The vision is on progress. <laughs> Hallelujah. After I wedded my wife, talk about wedding my wife. No penny in my pocket. I was in a church. A service was going on. My pocket was empty, but my faith was full. Because you can, you can never challenge faith. But I like to talk about it this morning. I saw this sister by the other corner, you know, singing like angel. When, when she raised her hands up to sing, and she smiled, her eyes glittered. It's, it's like it shook you like electric. <laughs> Many wealthy brothers were all on the queue. Some are blood, some are red. I raised my hand. I said, Lord, I claim her in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you think you have faith, everything you claim to have will be tested. When God told Joshua, every place your feet march, that as I've given you. God never told him that he's going to fight. But if you knew, it was all a battle. Hallelujah! That's where many of you make mistake. Because you say, oh, God said it, and I'm going to pick it. And if you see one try, I say, no. Do you know, I took a gunshot to get that lady. His uncle was a doctor, his senior brother was a doctor. And look at this boy who cannot put his tenses together. If my grammar is, is hitting each other, my ears and words today, you can imagine what it is 40 something years ago. And I came there. Listen, part of the things I'm telling you today is that if you want to be a Christian, be a good Christian. All these wishy-washy Christians that we have today, it cannot, it's not in the question. God is not looking for a man who is not totally committed. Jesus is not looking for hanky-panky people. If you want to make this, be committed to it. Those that made it has a testimony. They love it, not their life, even unto death. If it's going to cost your life, give your life to it. Until you get to a point of no return, God is never going to help you. Hallelujah. Because you can still help yourself. When I went to, in fact, I even told my mother. My mother said, ah, where are you going? Ike, 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 they go family. This, my son, you know, your problem say you don't know your size. Where do they go look for this family? Now, what do they go find here? I told her, I find a young lady that I love, that I'm going to say, okay, God help me. And to make it worse, I got to Ikedife family. I tried to convince Frederick Ikedife, which is my father-in-law, my, my father to give me charity for a, for, a, for a wife. And then they now listed for me the things I need to do and put some beer, some alcohol there. I told him, I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. I don't give alcohol. That may sound new to you, but that's what I believe. Fanatic, call me a fanatic, so let it be. I stood my ground. My, I never knew that some unbelievers read the Bible very well. My, my father-in-law then started showing me, give strong drink that he's willing to believe. I asked him, 
I asked him, are you willing to perish? It, He said, give me the drink first of all. <laughs> the Bible says, Jesus Christ made the water turn into wine. I said, he made the mineral water. I said, no. That the people drank it and they were feel good. I said, okay, fine. Just, I, at the time I asked him, I said, is this drink more important than your? After I succeeded to convince him, his, uncle, his junior brother, Dr. Doze Ikedife, found this boy... This boy head is not correct. <laughs> Until I decided to get the wedding time and I went to send the invitation. And he, I knocked at the door. He said, who is it? I said, Cosmas. He said, Cos what? I said, Cosmas. He said, if I open the door, you disappear. <laughs> I said, uncle, you know, this thing happened only once in people's life. You just need to come and honor this occasion. I, that's why I sent you. I didn't even have a car that time because I was under 20. I borrowed a friend pickup, uh, 404 pickup to go there. And the man said, I told you to disappear because you won't like what you see. I was still making argument. He brought a gun. Actually, he shot me. I, I fell when I was running. I left the pickup that I came with and, <laughs> and ended the race in my father-in-law's house. He followed me. He shot three times. The whole villagers ran out. He came and told my father-in-law, he said, Frederick, you build this home, this family, you want to scatter it, I don't have problem. You can give him, you can give him, you can give him your daughter free of charge, whatever you want to do. But listen to me today, this boy have to use his head to carry him when and Nkungwa. You know, Igbo people, when these are very traditional, and bring it into this house, otherwise if you ever come to my house, I'll kill him. Have I been proud of my wife? Charity got up and said, Uncle, the blood of Ikedife also flows in my vein. Why are you embarrassing my boyfriend? Did anybody choose to you who your wife is? Why must you choose for me who I'm going to marry? You think I'm making mistake following this boy? You call him a rascal, whatever. Please let me perish with it. Don't ever do this again. It was a confusion in their family. But the grace of God you know, shook that family. My existent girl, my father-in-law had five wives. My mother-in-law was the second wife, and my, my wife was the fifth among all the children. Today, 80% of them are Christians. <laughs> Hallelujah. My father-in-law came for my wedding and said, I've never given any of my daughter to marriage. I do send people. But because of the controversy that follows this one, I have to come myself. I got that girl and had it with the greatest honor. And she need to be here. If she's here today, you would have seen her. Because the beauty of a woman is not at 16, but at 16. <laughs> Nothing is terrific if you are 16 years and you are beautiful. But if you keep it at 60, then we can say you are beautiful. She's 61 now. And people say, why? She's seen me with one year. But I love her. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, why do you say this everywhere? I said, I wanted people to know how proud of you that I am. Amen. Amen. I am committed to her. She helped me. Because when God gives you, listen, so you can follow the things I'm saying. I'm still going to come back to my testimony. God sent men here to do something. And God sent a woman to help a man that is doing something. Don't look for a woman until you have something doing. Because there will be two problems in a home. If you are doing nothing, the woman will also come and say in confusion. A woman makeup is to help a man succeed. There's nothing a woman look in her life but to help his man succeed. So, that's why God said she will be your helpmate. God never gave Adam a, work, a wife until he gave him a job. So brothers, stop looking at sisters until you get a job. You got to get something to him. The Paul is quiet now because all we understood is that our job is just to produce children. I told you, he doesn't need PhD to do that one. An average idiot can do that. But God created a man 
as a, pro, a somebody who can be productive, a manager that can deploy resources. So, because God himself knew that these resources are not in plenty supply. So, a manager is somebody who has the capacity to know what is more important than the other. That's what God made a man to be. When a man is in that situation, then a woman comes into your life, she will find a value for existence because she's there to help you to succeed. Hallelujah. Amen. I go back to my testimony. When I married my wife, she was in my car. And we were going somewhere. My mother was at the back of the car. That's why I tell people, you never believe something until you confess it. Did, you didn't hear me well. I say you never believe anything until you say it. And never for the fear of controversy deny your experience. If God show you something, if because you say it is going to create confusion, let it be. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. If you ask, you, it, when God gives you a vision, a vision requires only one believer. It's not a group revelation. It's not something everybody must agree with. You are like a madman on yourself because only you saw something you are telling about that other people do not know anything about it. Until you confess it, you are still in doubt of believing it. But once you confess it, you are committed to it. I want to tell you three more things you are going to write down that help you succeed in life. And there are three C's. These are secrets I learned because you need to ask, how did this guy become so successful? I didn't win lottery. I turned 200 naira into multi-billions of naira. In 1976, it's money I could have spent in a restaurant that evening. My senior brother went with me and told me, leave this thing, let us go home. Let us go home. What is this? My uncle was my mother's junior brother. Because I was a Christian, and I locked up his shop to go and fast for three days. I started fasting before I turned 15. If you want to get an Igbo man attention, lock his shop. <laughs> if he never listened to you in life, he said, now nah, come, now nah, let us talk. What is the problem? Let's settle it. Eh? What is this? Because shop for us is a religion. <laughs> an Igbo man was sick, and three of his children used there, went to see him, and he was a debate of dying. He took his last breath and said, it's Okonkwa here. I said, yes, Okori. He said, what about Okonkwa? He said, it's here. He said, who did you leave the shop for? <laughs> My debt is immaterial, not to close, but you can't close shop. So I committed a taboo. I've locked my boss shop for three days and we were having a camping meeting where we were fasting. Before 15, and he came back and said, no, you've now become a fanatic and I'm going to help you so that you can really go on in this fanaticism the way you like. And called me that evening and counted 200 naira and get, my son brother said, let's go home. I turned back to him and said, do you have anyone to give me when we get home? That's part of the things I'm telling you because you neglect things and they trivialize things. Bible says, Job says, your beginning will be humble, but your end will be glorious. Start humble. Don't think about big things. Many people trying to go into business say, oh, what's, if I know what you do. If you just give me 10 billion naira, if you give me 100 million. No, it doesn't work like that. The idea you have play over 50% equation on your ability to succeed. If you want me to tell you by experience, I will tell you money doesn't play more than 20% on it. Because at the end of the day, when you have too big capital without knowledge, you know what you do? You will lose the capital. And in the business terminology, we will say you learn in a hard way. 
because your school fees become more expensive than the people that went to school. <laughs> so take your time. I still speak today that apprenticeship is a way to go. Learn under somebody's feet. People say, I didn't go to school. I was taught for six years the things that they don't teach people in Harvard. Street smart. I did the research, not in a formal way like Lekin and the rest of you do in school. I was, I was able to know what is in Honda 175 that match on Honda 675. And I was taking note of those knowledge I have because that's where money comes from. The man by my side of my shop went to school, has knowledge, has capital. His shop is full, but he doesn't know what he's selling. But I understood the things he's selling. He sells them by the packet. But I knew what is inside, outside of the packet. So when customer come to my store, go to a shop and ask for certain things, he say, you know, get them. The man will come to me. I ask it, I say, I get them. The man say, where is it? I say, if you pay, I give it to you. This is the price. That guy is selling it. He's making 10% or 20% on it. I will mark it up by 50% because this guy had gone around looking for the things and he has nowhere to find it. He said, but where? I said, if you pay, I will give it to you. The man will pay. I said, wait a minute. I'll run this way. When I get there, I don't want to go to this shop so that this man didn't know it's me that is coming. I sent somebody. I said, go to his shop. Get me well bearing. Volkswagen Beetle. He will give it to him, sell it to him with 10% or 20%. Before I brought it, I would remove the packet and put it in the side of my box. I won't put it in the packet and I will bring the actual goods I give the man. He said, but how am I sure? I said, if it doesn't work, bring it back. I'll give you back your money. Well, satisfaction guarantee. If you put it, it doesn't work, I, pay, I give you back your money. 100%. I'll write it down and sign. I'll make 50% on it. Give the other person money, return to this guy. I was selling this guy's goose. <laughs> he didn't know what his heart. My shop was start getting, as I now get capital, mechanics and dynamics start coming together. Because the idea you have is the mechanics of your business. The capital that you put on it is the dynamics of it. And mechanics without dynamics is no good. You need to get both of them to work together. So, when I started earning small money, I even cut off that 10 or 20% is getting because I now go to where he's buying because they require capital to buy and I started storing my shop. It wasn't long his shop started going down. As a matter of fact, it's not a joke. I'm telling you this in the name of the Lord. When I get there, the, when we started, the man has a shop that starts like this, like this, and like this. This is the entrance. And I was giving one quarter of the shop something like this to put my goods. But this guy, every Friday, before 2 a.m., he has put a perfume on himself, removed his cloth, put Agbada, he has gone to Owambe. He's selling motor pass. I was selling motorcycle pass, so we are not competitors. So you don't say I'm taking over his business. That's where I started. I, my goose gets so big till he started putting on the floor. So I knew he needed money. I gave him, I said, do you need more, some money? Yes. He collected more rent for me and gave me space. I moved from there to here. So I have earned one quarter of the shop. By the third year or fourth year, he will go every July, he will travel abroad though. He's going uh, overseas. I never had passport. I don't know what abroad is. But by the third year or fourth year, he gave me the remaining one. I took over from, from here to here now, become our goose. His own is still staying there. By the fifth year, he collected the remaining rate and packed his goose and put it in a carton. So I own the whole shop. We are not selling the same product. That's why I said you need to concentrate in the things you are doing. The time you give for it is part of the a seed you are sowing that you are going to reap back from. So I focus in the things I'm doing, got proper knowledge about it, and that has been my confidence. When my uncle gave me 200 naira, he thought he had done the worst thing to me. 
I, I was full with excitement because I said, oh, finally, I am not under anybody's tutorage. I can do with my life what I want to do today. Oh, praise the Lord. My principal said, leave the money, let's go. I said, I'm taking this one. But I had a little understanding on the word of God. I look at my uncle, direct to his eyes. I said, uncle, five years from today, if you had who I am, your head will be spinning. My senior brother is still alive. My uncle died four years ago. Before his death, he was on a salary of 100000 from me and he's not working for me every month. God started turning things around. The first partnership I had with my senior brother, and my senior brother goes with a Catholic guy. We are from Catholic family. But I was a Christian. Ask him, why did we break up? The same principle of the word of God. Okay? I go to church, a Pentecostal church, and I'll drop one naira in offering. My senior brother questioned me and said, you can't take one naira to offering. We are dropping 10 kobo. You cannot take church to one naira. I said, you drink beer. So the offering I make compensates for the beer you drank. He said he's not ready for this agreement with me. Let us separate. I said salvation of Israel is not in anybody's hand. I agree. Let us separate. God's word calls for total separation from every unbelief. Not until Abraham left Lot, he didn't know the ground where he is. He's filled with gold. So sometimes you partner with this partner. People are think they are helping you. They are holding you back. Just find yourself in the will of God and see what happens. That's how we parted way. And I started my own. And that's, if you know the name Koscharis today, Koscharis is Cosmos and Charity. That's how I corner that name. It's Koscharis is, instead of making it sound local, Koscharity. You look like a village company. I call it Koscharis. Hallelujah. Amen. And people thought it was a Greek company. So during the import license regime, they decided to give seven companies import license. AG Leventis, uh, UTC Motors, um, Ecredit School Motors, all this motor, because I've cooperated with Charis Motor. They thought I was one of these big companies. Our name appeared number seven in the list, and I got import license. And it was a seller's market. That was my first breakthrough, my second breakthrough. My first breakthrough was Bulos in Ikeja, in Ilegun. But when you put your mind in the things you want to do, the real truth is like, like I'm saying, listen to me. At before 25, we were traveling. My mother was in the car, my wife. I said, before I turn 25, I will be a millionaire. When it comes on me, I say it. And my mother said, Cosmas, Please now, this is your bosom is turning my stomach. Can, can we please say any other thing? I said, Mom, what did I say wrong? I just told you what I'm going to do. He said, he said I should hold the things I'm going to do. When he dropped from the car, then I can say it. <laughs> I'm a Christian, and I'm telling you real fat. In the presence of my mother, I say, Mom, before I turn 25, I will be a millionaire. Do you want to stop? He says, please stop. I stop. I open the door. My mother get down. I jammed the car and I drove away without her. My wife said, what are you doing? I say, it's my fate. Nobody takes it from me. You got to be violent with your fate. Never for the fear of controversy. Deny your experience. If I, my mother wanted to create a doubt in my heart, the word of God will always correct error. Mary one day came to Jesus and said, your father and my mother uh, and, and you has been looking for you. He wanted to make that divine birth as natural thing. Jesus looked at him and said, who is my mother? Who is my father? The word will correct error every time. I stood on the basis of the word and I said, I will do that. My mother lived to see it. By 24, I made a million naira. When a million naira was a good sum of money, not today. It was $1.8 million before I turned 25. Because exchange rate then was 1 naira 88 cents. Less than 12 cents, you have $2 million. You have $2 for naira. And this was, and then things begin to happen from then. So, I am here to testify and tell you 
that this God we are talking about is real if you follow the principle of his word. Don't violate principle. What the word said in, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 7, you require courage. Courage to believe God. I, let me tell you now, you can write them down. The other three things, I said you require three things to succeed. One of them is vision, faith, and courage. Courage is not an absence of fear. Courage is ability to act in the face of danger. When you understand principle, everything bow to you. Some of you never watch it, but I can play it for you. Three Kenyans that went to pursue 25 hungry lions that killed a giraffe and wanted to eat it. It's not a tell because it's BBC that covered it. They understood that knowledge that there is a fear of human being in animal. When I was a child, the, our compound in our building, by our place in the village, was behind Abuedo. Abuedo is a big, thick forest. My parents told me, if I'm going out in the night and I see a strange animal, I should not run away. I should look him straight into the eyes. That when he contact my eyes, he will run away. And when he run away, I should quickly come inside. Because if he return back, he will eat me. <laughs> These three Kenyans convinced BBC to vision this. That this is, BBC said, no, 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 we're afraid. You, know, you are dangerous in your life. He said, don't worry. These are things we have done all our life. And 25 hungry lions had killed a, a giraffe they were eating. And they moved in one accord with absolute confidence, not moving. Moving. The people were putting heart in their heart. Staying one day with a long camera vision. Them. Coming, coming. The lion got, got their attention. They stopped eating. They look at him. They were coming. They were coming. They didn't. By the time they are getting like some few meters, the first lion ran away. The second one ran away. They took their knife. <laughs> and cut the leg, and put it in their back, and move, and say, we brought these lions. We brought them, and they carried the meat away. The lion came back, and looked at them as they were going. They pulled the remaining, the remaining meat, maybe, so that they don't come back and take the remaining one. <laughs> they say, we brought this lion. Brought. But they understand the principle. Principles are law. Law are built in the creation. When the thing is being made, you need to know who God make you to be. Then you will not fear anything. One day, God, average human being, got afraid when you introduce him to himself. A man called Moses, who thought he was courageous, he had killed one Egyptian and ran away. Ran away. And from running away, he ended up being a shepherd. But his maker, the manufacturer, knew what he put on him. And one day the manufacturer appeared to introduce him to himself and say, you are a priest. You are a general. You are a general of two million people. You are an author of five books. People are going to read your script and make great things about it. Moses said, who are you talking about? Me? I'm a stammerer. I cannot talk. The manufacturer said, but that is who you are. One day, he met another man called Gideon. And said, you are a mighty army. You are a, a mighty... George, Gideon said, eh, me? We are Yoruba people. We are cowards. We don't do anything. <laughs> we, we, don't, 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 don't talk like that. Don't, don't, talk, don't, don't talk like that. But the man said, that's who you are. That's what I created you to be. Whenever God introduced himself to a man, that man became afraid of himself. But I thank God that I made the greatest teacher of my life. Brother Leke introduced to it. Because some of you will be wondering, what is this businessman doing behind here? I will conclude very soon and I will let you know. It's important you know something and be something. But I'm telling you, no matter who you are, if you can come to a position 
I need to still say those things. The three pres- another three principles I want you to write down is don't condemn. Write it down. Don't condemn. Don't criticize. They all see. Don't condemn. Don't criticize. And uh, don't... Um, Give me one minute. There's one more. I'll come back to it. Um, These are principles that work, that I have laid upon. Proverbs Proverbs 18.21 says the power of life and death is is in the tongue. People don't know. I, I didn't go to school, but I happened to work with people. My working with BMW, one time they call a man who is trying to teach us a sales technique. And the man that came to teach us sales te- techniques did something like these are the schools that I went that amazes me. He will ask, he said he wants to do a test on us so that we can know the power of our words. He will ask you to say a disaster, and you will say a disaster. He will make a test on you, and you see how weak you are. The things you wouldn't do before. He will say, say charity. He will say charity, and you see how strong you are. He will tell you to say debt, and you say debt, and you see how weak you are. He will ask you to say love. You say love, you see how strong you are. After that day, negative word disappear from me. When I go to a meeting with people, we are in a board meeting. By the way, with my elementary three degree, <laughs> I serve in two public quoted bank in Nigeria. Spring Bank PLC and Access Bank PLC. And I was a chairman of credit committee for 12 years in one of them. All the people that in my board have first class, only me didn't have school sat. But I brought something in the board that none of them have. The things they don't teach them in Harvard. Street smart. I can smell credit. Any cre- <laughs> Any credit, I tell you, don't touch this. You touch it, you see what happened after. It's a gift. It's not something you work for. But something that is in you... But when you start deploying yourself, those things come into manifestation. Okay? They've said it. I was the chairman of Nigeria Table Tennis Federation for 16 years, and I attended five Olympics with table tennis. I led the Nigerian team to become African champion, Commonwealth single champion, and Commonwealth uh, uh, team champion. We won Britain on their own ground in in, uh, in uh, Manchester in uh, that 2008 or so. We went to uh, Australia and we won the team event. I led Shegu Toriola. So I made my mark. I was actually moving them into Olympic to get them to the pro. But they, 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 and I so simply motivate them and tell them what they are capable of doing. When they believe in themselves, you see that Something like I dream will drop into them that the strength they never believe about will give them the victory. And it looks like a magic. And that's what I'm telling you here today. Don't ever underrate yourself. Believe. Nobody will believe in you until you believe in yourself. Your, your, your belief on who you are must be greater than your fear to fail for you to succeed. There are different things between ambition and the vision. Ambi- ambition is about yourself and your family alone. I went to the United States the first time in my life was 1982. And the people said, when I was trying to go back, they said, why do you want to go back to Nigeria? That place is useless, nothing is there. By this time, I don't think, uh, I don't know how much I had. I'm not, I won't say I've really arrived. 
But I had a different mindset because I felt this is my poor old mother that has done all of this. In fact, it's 1980, not 1981. Before 1980 was my first trip to USA. They convinced me everything to stay. I said, what do you guys have here? Let me ask you. Orange juice and bottle of milk in your refrigerator. <laughs> and light 24 hours. By the end of the month, if you don't pay bill of this house you are saying you own, you're on the street. I'm going back to Nigeria because I want to create something to be able to touch the life of other people. Vision is about inclusiveness. It's not about you. That's how you judge whether your vision is from God. If your vision is about who you are going to be and all the things you are going to get, then God has not called you. That vision is not from God. And I will support it with scripture. When Joseph saw himself as a prime minister in Egypt, the list of the children, he confessed it and his family, his brothers get offended. Why are you talking like this? After they scrolled him, they went to report to their daddy, thinking that reporting to their daddy will make uh, Joseph to back up. And the daddy called, Joseph, come here, come. What is this that I'm hearing about you? The vision even increased. <laughs> Joseph said, I saw the moon. And they, said, and they made the ovation. To, they said, what? Did I hear you well? You mean myself and your mother is also going to <laughs> bow down before you? He said, mom and dad, I saw myself sustaining this family. I will provide for every one of you. That is the power of vision. If you see it, confess it. But time will prove whether that vision you have is correct. The way you move from the time you say you have that vision will show me whether the vision you have is correct. Because you can move with people who will de derail you from that vision. But if it's a real vision, you begin to choose your friend from the day you have that vision. You begin to check. You, you don't have crisis when you get to bookshop to look for the book to buy. You know that everything you are looking for is something that is going to collaborate with that vision to make that vision come to pass. Joseph spoke his vision and stayed on it and carried that vision on and he created a confusion, hatred. If you are not hated, if they do not say you are crazy, God has not spoken to you. If you are, the Bible said they hated Jesus without a cause. What was the problem? Jesus knew what he came here to do. He is the greatest businessman that ever exists. So business people don't lose hope. There is a man who came here to show us how to do business. He had a product the world is looking for that many people do not know anything about it. He's selling internal life. That is his product. And he wanted to market it to anybody who wants to buy it. And he started looking for people to join his company. And he took 12 crude raw materials, not refined at all. Uh, people who know how to get the gut out of a fish and brought them together and started refining them. He bought their crudeness and whatever. He chose some profession, pro professionals. So professionals don't lose hope. There is... There's Matthew, the accountant, was there. And Luke, the physician, was also among them. Because many of you think when you become a Christian, you become useless. Somebody has told you a lie. Until you find the purpose why you were born, you are still wondering whether you are a man or you are a female. Because being a man is fulfilling the purpose why God sent you here. We need you. Every one of us need you. There's something you are bringing in the equation. The world needs you. When you find what we need from you, your value, will, your value of significance will increase and we will pay you for that value. So when Jesus came here, he started talking to these people to knock, knock out all those doubts that they have even been taught. You are never going to be important. Nothing is going to work about you. The world doesn't give you any opportunity to succeed. That was how he took these people from Grand Zero. And one day, his church grew. And in the evening, he wanted to have a seminar and told his disciples, we are going to do something. Let's feed these people. Over 5,000 people. And they said, what are you talking about? What are we going to, where are we going to get bread to feed these people? The women and children are not counted. 
there's a small boy with his lunch box. He said, get him. Ask him to surrender it. Because when you surrender things in the hand of God, you see the power. I haven't given you the power of test. I haven't given you testimony about giving. Because when you see people like this, you think they fall from heaven. I have started business and run bankruptcy. If you think it's something new. Landlord pursued me, threw my things away. If you live a life of financial embarrassment, you will never want to get there again. And I've been there. And the man is still around, Justice Ubezonu, who came one day and I hid myself <laughs> behind the counter. He told my boy, he said, your boss no there. Okay, come out, let me lock the door. When the door met Pakistan, I said, a guy there here. <laughs> and I thought he was going to change his mind. He locked me out and closed the place. He said, if you, if you get the money, you come and see me. I've gone through all of that. Those are training ground. Those are what Joseph went through. Those are the things David went through for building you up for a capacity. You are not, a, a, a gold is not a gold from there. It's, he has to go through refinement. Jesus was refining these people. And he took this lunch box and blessed it, show it to the owner. And then he, he taught them administration, sit them down in 50. In 40s, in 100, I'm going to do something. I have fed them, and they all ate, and the Bible said they were filled. What does that mean? Customer satisfaction. It's another thing he taught them. <laughs> Hallelujah. They ate, and they were filled. After they have ate and feel satisfied, Jesus left them. The following day, <laughs> he was by the other side of the river. They were looking for him. They were looking for him. Because that's what all, many of us are doing. We are, not, we are not ready to follow principle. We are looking for miracle baby, miracle uh, wealth, miracle prosperity, miracle everything, and we, buy, we violate principle. Listen, I don't care who you are. You can have all the faith you want in the world. If you jump on the third floor down, you don't need the prophet. I will tell you you will die, no matter the faith you have. Okay? Because you have violated the... Uh, a principle. Seeds are not made to grow on a table. You can keep a seed here. I'm speaking tongue. No, everything. After you did that, the seed will die. When you take that seed and sow it in the earth, the power of sowing and reaping will take effect. That seed become in another place. Many of you has misplaced the things that you've been taught. You didn't follow principle, and that's why you don't get the result. Some of you are tired of praying. You can't even pray. Why? Because you don't get the result. The reason why you don't get the result is that you are playing a miss. You are not following the principle. But does the power of prayer still work? I say yes, it works. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. If Jesus served one person in the Bible days, if he cannot serve another person today, he made a mistake when he served the first person. But he never changed. So, this man, the following day, they come and say, oh, we've been looking for you. <laughs> a really good pastor will be suspicious about his people and know what is motivating them. Not this church we turn the night to fill it with crowd. We want to know, these people that are coming, what are they coming for? What is their motive? Jesus looked at them, his church grew by 70%. And he looked at them and I said, tell me, why did you come back? They thought he would be jumping up. Hey, revival is happening. He said, why did you come back? They were hesitating. He said, I will tell you. You are not interested in a change. You are here looking for a handout. A man who will give you something without work. You are looking for lottery money. Christians still play uh, 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 Niger. What do you call this game? That soccer game? Niger bet. You are a gambler. That never make you wealth. And you can never, I've been in Las Vegas more than 30 years ago. I've never put a quarter in that machine because I know you don't make money that way. If you violate principle, you pay for it. I am teaching you something they may never have taught you in church. Jesus questioned them, why did you come back? They were starting at him. He said, this time I'm going to tell you. I'll give you a test of the word. No more bread. You are, you are going to eat me. I am the bread. You are looking for some drink? 
I am the drink. When you drink me, you will never thirst again. The people say, oh my God. This man is demanding too much. He wants us to completely depend upon him. What is he talking about? Bible recorded St. John 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, he said they went back and they never walked with him anymore. He turned to the 12 and said, are you still here? In other words, are you like the other people? Won't you go away? That's the quality of a leader. Friend or no friend. Denomination or no denomination. Whether my coat match my trouser, I want my experience to match the word of God. It's not about my handbag matching my shoe. Let me be the word made flesh in my own generation. Hallelujah. That's why in spite of all of these things you've seen done, I never miss Saturday evangelism. I started doing that at the age of 14, and I still do that till today. Two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I don't know who caught me at Makoko village with my microphone and put it on internet all over the world. Okay? Because that's, I believe in that principle that if you find something good, you must share it with everybody. It's not about you. It's about the community. Jesus did not come for people who are looking for handout. He came for people who are interested in transformation leadership. That is what he came to introduce. I want you to impress your neighborhood, your community. Let them take a note of you. If they never believe God, you are going to stand as a judgment to them in the last day. The things I'm going to do through you. That's what he came to introduce. When he came here, he said, I can do nothing of myself except what my father does. He followed the principle his father showed him, and that's what he was introducing. He said, labor not for the bread that the meat that pass away, but labor for this meat that leads for eternal life. Your desire must be to serve God without reservation. If I perish, I perish. They love it not their life even unto death. In this principle, God can come on the scene and see your heart that he can trust you with resources. He can trust you with wealth. I am not a rich man that became a Christian. I am a Christian that became a rich man. And there, and there are two different things between them. Because a rich man that become a Christian condescend to the people, look down on them, talk to them like they are useless, only him is important, as if it is the thing they taught him in Harvard that make the difference in you. It's not who you are, but what God can make out of your life. Hallelujah! So, I follow these principles, and I know that it works. If you understand it, and place your life in it, by December, I'm not saying five years today, people will notice some significance about you. You need to understand that there is dignity in labor. What God created a man to do is to add value in the things that he has done. God wants you to be a manager. By, your, by the things you do, the things, and please don't confuse your job with your work. Because that's where many of you make mistakes. When a man loses his job, he lost his head. But your job is not what you are created here to be. Your job is what you are paid for. But you are called here to work. Your work is what you are born to do. Your job is what people pay you for the things you do. And that's why somebody can sack you from your job, but nobody can sack you from being. Hallelujah! I said something very important. Nobody can sack you from being. What do you do with your spare time in the, in the evening when you come back from your job? That's when you start deploying yourself. A total man is a man who deployed himself, who find out the gift why he came here. Keep that job until your gift come. But your gift is in you. Stop looking for where to search it. The thing you are looking for is within you, not outside of you. When you discover it, the people that know you will never know you again. This is the mystery behind the man they call Cosmos in America. I found this out very early in my life, and I believe it with all my heart, and I followed it as a law of God. You are called here to walk. Walk is God said to the man, dress this garden, keep it for me. Work is your main purpose of birth. 
not job. Job is what they paid you for. So, if you go to job, they can sack you. My time is up. They can sack you from that job, but nobody can sack you from being. If you stay with the word of God and deploy yourself, deploying yourself is finding out the things you were called here to do. Let me round up here. I go, I round it up on a vision. Listen, you can go to, you can go to work and they will send you back on that job. You need to have the right attitude. I found that the remaining thing I'm talking about, don't criticize, don't complain, and don't condemn. It's a law. Don't condemn, don't complain, don't criticize. This is a principle. The children of Israel, nobody saw more miracle than them. Miracle never change anybody. Miracle is to get your attention to hear the word of God. That's what he's sent for. Miracle is not a means for you to, because it's, a, it's, it's God coming on the scene to show you that he's still alive. But that miracle does not violate his principle. His principles still remain. The children of Israel saw more miracle. One time in Genesis, I think, uh, 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 Numbers verse 8 or so, they, they complain. We have nothing to eat except this manna. This manna. The heavenly food become this manna to them. Because they trivialized the things God is doing. They couldn't see beyond that. And God said, you, you, you economize this. You didn't mean anything to you. That's how many of us are. Let us trust God without reservation. And believe him for what he promised to do in our life. So, when you have a vision and you are working and they send you back from that job, don't condemn that company. Don't say things wrong about them. And that's one thing I'm going to tell you. You go to work on Monday. That's how I want to close. What I want you to do. If they are persecuting you on that job, go to that job with excitement. Anybody you see, you shake his hand, smiling. And they will be wondering what is going wrong with you. And they thought, oh, this guy, I thought he's frustrated and we almost get him out of this place. And they will say, is that everything okay? You just said, that is not what I saw. You have spoken in tongue. They need an interpreter to do that. <laughs> that was what happened. Joseph was in the pit. He didn't see pit. God didn't show him pit. He showed him throne. <laughs> While he was in the pit, he did not have resentment over his brothers because that would violate the principle of him getting to the place. But if I can guess what Joseph said, he looked, it was no wall, it was pit. But Joseph would say, this is not what I saw. If what you are going through, any pit you are need pit of low down lifestyle. Whatever pit on it is the right pit. Tell your brother and sister, I am in the right pit today. Amen. Why are you in the right pit? Because this is not what you saw. If this is not what you saw, the things you saw is going to be manifest. That means what you are seeing today is temporary. Because the things you are seeing today cannot violate the place that you are going to be. Your mistake do not cancel your assignment. You are born for a purpose and the purpose of God must be fulfilled in your life. Church, that's a total man. A total man is a man that deployed himself to become what God sent him here to do. The landlord, throw your things out. Just smile and say, this is not what I saw. The landlord said, what are you talking about? Because if that's not what you have saw, that means your own house is coming. The real house is in progress. But that should give you a determination. People laugh at me growing up. When they sing that song, they say, I will never mount anything in life. They say, I won't make it. I am gone. Because you are telling the story of my life. Nobody gave me any chance. People believe I am imbecile. I will never amount to anything in life. 
I never cursed any one of them on my honor. All I say is that God keep them alive to see what I, I can't understand Christians go to places and say, what of your enemies? Say, die, 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 die. Why are you just dying? Do you know the spirit that is upon you? In the book of Luke, they ask Jesus, should we, should we, Cancel Jesus said, don't you know the spirit that is upon you? You don't know what spirit you receive. Church, God requires faithfulness. And I'll close with this. Bring me Hebrews chapter 3. So I crown it up with the things I'm saying. So the people will see. Hebrews chapter 3. Listen how Paul addressed you. Take meaning for every word. This words I'm telling you now are part of the principle that I live with. And I'm going to read it for you without opening my Bible. Wherefore, holy brethren, Paul is addressing the Hebrew Christians, not the Corinthians. These are, Corinthians are children who always fight and sleep with their father's mother and all of those things. <laughs> but Hebrew and people who already matured believe in the word of God. So wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession. Our what? Our profession. Who was faithful to him that appointed him? As also Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house who are the house of Christ? Whose house are we? On what condition? On one condition. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost have said today, if you will hear his voice, don't sit here and say, what is that man talking about? Because he will pass you by. If you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. As in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your father tempted me and saw my work, 40 years I was grieved with that generation because they've always erred and they have not known my way. Verse 12. So I swore in my wrath they should not enter into my rest. I think, no, that's, that, that's 11. That's 11. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I swore in my wrath they should not enter into my rest. Then the next verse says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart. That heart that doubt the word of God is an evil heart. An evil heart of unbelief in the pattern from the living God. But exalt one another daily while it's called today. For some of us, that's where, where am I now? 13. No, no, I think I got it wrong. 13 said, but exalt one another daily Why it is today, lest any of you being hardened. Let him not trick any of you. When the devil put an evil thought upon you, you didn't know you were a child of God. You start thinking the thought of the devil. His thought is not your thought. Your thought is when you, something is presented to you in the, in, in the internet. Is that correct? They tell you to subscribe. When you believe in it, you click, you download. Then it gets into your subconscious. But you cannot stop anybody offering you anything. But you only become part of it when you subscribe. When you download, then it becomes your own. Hallelujah. So, when the devil, the head is a battlefield, when the devil throw thoughts into you, it's a thought. When you start dwelling in it and the convinced that this is correct, that's when you have accepted it. Then it becomes yours. Before then, it's not your thought. And that's why Paul said, let none of you be in the deceived. Can, this calling of sin, the devil, you know, put to, you know, make you feel you are no good and this and, and you are battling with it in your mind. Then you are not yet at, 
aware who you are. Romans 5, 20, uh, Romans 5, 8, uh, Romans chapter 5, somewhere there says, we were made sinners. Not that we went to school to learn how to sin. The way we were born here is sin. By the way, from one man's sin, all of you become sinners. By one man's righteousness, all of you are made the righteousness of God. You need to believe it and confess it. Open your mouth now and say, I am the righteousness of God. <laughs> say it with confidence. No, no, I have the one. <laughs> Don't support Satan in the things he's trying to say. Lest any of you being hardened through the diseases of sin. For some, when they have had, did provoked. That's the truth. No, I think, what is verse 14? 14 says what? For we are made partakers of Christ. That's correct. That's where I'm making, missing it. For we are made partakers of Christ. For emphasis, that's the second time he's saying it. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, you don't need to doubt yourself. You've got to believe what has been taught to you. Sit in a one church let the pastor water you with the word of God. Don't be jumping one place to the other without foundation. Because you cannot grow. A seed that is being uprooted can never have root to go into the ground. Grow up in that place where the man of God will, give, will have confidence in you over what he has taught you. Hallelujah. 15 said, well, as the Holy Ghost says, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For some, 16, when they have heard, did provoked. How be it? Was it not with them that came out of Egypt? And to who swore he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believeth not. So we see that they could not enter because of their unbelief. It is written in the Bible 365 times, do not be afraid. God is telling you every day of your life, including the leap year, don't be afraid. But in one time, in one part's place, he permitted you to be afraid. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest any promise left us of entering into the rest. Any of you sitting down here listening to me should come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached, did not profit them because they did not act with faith. They did not add wisdom for application. If you don't mind, permit me to do this. If you had me today, if any of you are still in doubt of himself and you have never given your life to Christ, you've never come into that personal experience of the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, not depending on your father's experience or your mother's experience. You go to know him by yourself. Can you raise your hand? I want to pray for you that the same God that made this transformation in my life will touch you. If there's anybody like that, please raise up your hand. I'd like to pray for you. God bless you. Any other person? I'm not persuading you, but just tell, trust me, if you give me any benefit of doubt, you will know that this thing I'm telling you is not about intellectualism. It's about experience God who came on the scene in this age. For example, raise somebody up to be able to show something. Raise your hand up, brother. Can you stand up? Stand up wherever you are. Let's pray. The rest of you, can you bow your head down? <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this afternoon. Lord, I didn't touch my note. I left it completely. I had some thought what I want to say while I come here, but you took it in another dimension after hearing your servant Leke, Lord. And I went this way because there is a reason. Lord, you said there is a joy in heaven over one soul. It doesn't need to be a million people. I've spoken to 30,000 people at one time, but Lord, these two or three individuals that have raised their hand up, I commit them to you. I pray over them, Lord God. Lord, may you give a witness to the things that I have said here on their life. I want you, if you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to make this statement. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, 
I come to you today the way I am. I know I couldn't make it on my own. Lord, I surrender my life to you. I want you to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Lord, may these things Cosmos has testified. Lord, be manifest in my life. I want to live for you all the days of my life. I don't care anymore what anybody is going to say about me. Today, I'm standing before this audience and I'm making a commitment to you. Lord, lead me from now on and I will always be yours time and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. God bless you, church.